There are eight common regrets when people rush out and get a home battery to take advantage of the new Australian federal and state government incentives. I'll make sure that you know exactly how to avoid all of them and avoid a lot of tears and problems in the future. The first regret to avoid is signing a contract that you can't get out of, which has no clause saying that you have the right to get your deposit back and not install the battery if the rebate program set by the government, the rules change. West Australians are finding this out right now because the rules for the program that their state has to incentivize battery installation in homes changed between the initial election promise a couple of months ago and what the state government decided after getting into office later. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. The second regret to avoid is not realizing that you can only get these home battery incentives from the government once. So make sure you really have a think, what's the best size of home battery for your home? That doesn't necessarily mean getting the most massive one. A lot of homes would find that six to 10 kilowatt hour home battery will cover a lot of their peak, most expensive electricity needs. And that's during the evening usually when the solar panels aren't generating anything because the sun's already gone down. The third battery regret to avoid is realizing that there's such a thing as battery degradation. So you can count on your home battery capacity, the actual usable capacity, reducing by about 30% slowly over the 10 years of the usual home battery warranty. So that means if you're planning to get perhaps say a 15 kilowatt home battery, because that'll cover all your needs for your household during peak hours in the evening, especially in winter, then I would suggest getting one third extra capacity. And that's the amount that you'll get as a bonus buffer in the first early years. And it'll slowly degrade down so that the usable capacity is about 15 kilowatt hours after the 10 years is over. The fourth home battery regret is that you'll make the cost of your home battery back over the next few years because you're going to sign up for an electricity provider like Amber, which instead of giving you a fixed price in advance during the day and night for your electricity, means you pay the positive or negative live electricity price on the national electricity market. That's a big mistake because the whole point of these federal and state incentives to get people to install really big batteries is to get rid of those big price spikes. It's to soak up lots of solar generation during the middle of the day and feed it back into the grid and into household usage in the evenings and at nighttime. So definitely don't think that over the next five or 10 years, the massive amber price spikes that happen commonly these days where people say they make $20, $50, $100 a day from feeding their home battery capacity back into the grid into the evening, that is not guaranteed to keep happening. So don't make the regret of getting a massive battery far larger capacity than you need and thinking that you'll trade your way into making a big profit over time. There is no guarantee that will happen. The fifth home battery regret to avoid is that a lot of people think that all home batteries automatically have blackout and black start protection. Well, they don't. So unless you ask for that specifically, and it's specifically said in your quote that your home battery has blackout and black start protection, it, do it means that you have no guarantee at all that if there's a grid outage, you know, a tree falls outside your house and cuts off the power line during a big storm, there is no guarantee that your home battery will kick in and power your house if you haven't got home backup gear installed with it. Make sure that your contract says that you have this included. If you are sure that your home battery includes backup and black start protection, Find out whether it's for one key circuit. For example, the kitchen is a really good idea. You want your fridge to keep running in a blackout. 
as well as your microwave and light so you can be in there while there's no power. But a lot of people think, oh, I want to get my whole house backed up by the battery. That's actually not a good idea because especially if you've got really power hungry things like a pool pump or air conditioning and electric heaters, those will suck a home battery dry really fast. It's much smarter to get your home battery back up for one key circuit that has things like the fridge, which you really need to make sure your food doesn't go off during a blackout and some key lights, perhaps a microwave, like I said. Sixth common home battery regret is a no-name brand, which nobody's ever heard of in the industry as a reputable provider of batteries and also doesn't have any local Australian staff for sales, but especially for support. You really, really want whatever home battery you have to have staff who are based in Australia, speak English and know their battery really well. They work full time for the battery company and they can help you answer any of your questions after the installation or also importantly, if there are any problems or if you want to upgrade later. So that's definitely a key. Do not go for a home battery without local Australian employed staff clearly in an office which can be found that actually has people in it, not just like a PO box office in a office rental space. Seventh battery regret to avoid is it's very tempting for people to choose the ultra cheapest installer of home batteries because they want to save money. They'll choose someone who's barely been in business for a while, hardly has any good reviews, doesn't have much experience, and that's the problem. If you choose someone like that, they're much more likely to go out of business after a few years once the battery rebates finish and the quick easy money disappears, and then you're stuck with a problem, you don't get support from your installer choose someone that's been in the business and installed lots of home batteries before for many years, ideally in your area, not somewhere really far away, and you'll have a much better chance of them being able to help you in the future and providing good support. The eighth home battery regret is very closely linked to the seventh battery regret is the eighth one, which is Choosing the cheapest no-name battery, nobody's ever heard of it, you can't find much about it online, but it's super cheap and after the rebate it means you have to pay hardly anything out of pocket. What could be bad about that? Well, a lot of things could be bad about that. The software will probably be terrible and not maintained over time, so the app might disappear, it might have less reliability, it definitely will have much less support afterwards. The likelihood is that that company which sold you the really, really, really cheap no-name battery for hardly anything out of pocket is not going to be around after five or ten years when your battery might need support or maintenance. It's just not worth it. Buy something decent quality. I've done other videos about that. Choose a company that's been in business in the home battery space or the battery space generally and is expanding into homes, do that. It's much wiser in the long term. You're making a 10 year investment for your house. So hopefully my tips have help you avoid the eight most common home battery regrets. Good luck. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.